What are the common errors committed by Muslims whilst they're celebrating Eid? There are some errors which are committed by many Muslims, some due to lack of knowledge, some due to ignorance. For example, there are many Muslims who think that if they pray in the night during Eid, if they pray the Salah, then the day when hearts die. This is actually a hadith which some people think it is sahih, but it's not so. That the Prophet said that if you pray in the night of the Eid, your heart will not die the day when hearts die. If you see, it has got two isnads. One of them is very weak, that is daif jiddan, and the other is daif. So it's totally wrong for anyone to pray during the night of the Eid, thinking it will get him sawab. To single out that night only for praying is not allowed. Unless a person is habituated for praying in the night and then he prays, it's no problem. But to single out the Eid night only for prayer, it is wrong. Furthermore, there are some Muslims who visit graves during Eid, thinking it is good during Eid day. So visiting grave according to the Hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, it reminds you of your Akhirah. But to single out one particular day and visit the grave during that day, it is not recommended. There is no Hadith which shows us that the Sahaba of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam visited the grave during Eid. So to single out during Eid day to visit the grave, it's not there in the Sunnah of the Prophets. And furthermore, some people, they miss the Jama'ah, which is very wrong, and they miss the Salah during Eid day, which is totally wrong. As a Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hadith of Tirmidhi, Book of Faith, Hadith number 2621, where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the covenant between us and you is prayer. And anyone who forsakes it is a kafir. So Salah is very important. Offering Jama'ah is important. Furthermore, that mistake that people make normally is that there's too much of intermingling of the sexes, men and women. Even when they go for Salah, they don't take care and we find men and women chatting with each other. They adorn themselves, the women, which is not right. Intermingling should be prevented. And for the places where Eid are offered, in the Eidgah, or if it's in a mosque, then it should be seen to it that there are separate entrances for the men and women. Equal but separate facility. So that this intermingling is avoided. Furthermore, there are some women who adorn themselves, who put perfume, who don't do hijab. Now this should be avoided. When they come in front of a nahmeram, they should be in hijab. They should be properly covered. They should not wear perfume. They should not adorn themselves. They should not attract the opposite sex, the nahmeram. If they do it for the husband alone, it's good, alhamdulillah. If they do it amongst the women only, no problem. But for the nahmeram, it's not allowed. It's mentioned in the hadith of Sunan Nisai, hadith number 5129, where the beloved Prophet said that any woman who wears perfume and passes so that people may smell her perfume, if she wears the perfume and people smell her perfume, it's as good as she is an adulteress. So these things should be avoided. Further, some of the Muslims, women, eat day comes, they watch movies, they hear songs, they sing, they dance. They play musical instruments, and all these things are nothing but kutuwa to shaitan. You know, watching un Islamic movies, listening to un Islamic songs, etc. As our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number seven, in the book of drinks, hadith number 5590. The Prophet said that there will be a time when there will be some people from my ummah who will say that illegal sexual intercourse, drinking intoxicants, wearing silk, and playing of musical instruments are halal, is legal. So we have to be careful that we should not be amongst these people. And one more point to be noted is that many of the Muslims, they're happy that Ramadan is over. Oh, now we don't have to fast, you know, as though fasting was a burden. So they're happy because they don't have to fast, they don't have to fast. Rather, they should be happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them complete the month of Ramadan made them fast. That should be right, because fasting is worship. They should be happy for that, that they were able to complete, other than be happy that it was something burden which they finished. So these things Muslims should avoid.